Entertains, welcome. What is up? Great to see you guys. Hope that you are having a fantastic 2018. What is going on? Great to have you today. I'm Brandon Dempsey with Worship Team Training and Worship Team Training University. What is up, friends? Hope you guys are happy New Year to you and that things are starting out right. And uh, man, we have a lot going for you. It is great to be back. Great to see you. It's been a long time. I think it's only been probably like a week and a half or so, but it feels like forever. So I pray that during this time that as God's been doing some shifting and moving within your ministry up to this new year, 2018, that great things are happening. We trust and we know that they are. And man, it is so great to uh, to be back with you. So what is up? If you guys would on Facebook Live, thanks so much for watching. If you would share this out with a friend, go ahead and um, hit the button for share and let everybody know what's going on. Periscope, also, what's up? Great to see you guys as well. How are you? And um, our great friends, of course, listening back to uh, iTunes on iPod and also, well, not iPod, but your iPhone, whatever. iHeart Radio, Spreaker, and uh, thanks so much for being here, you guys. Man, it has been a, a, a turbulent, I'd say, 2018 already. Uh, we've had a lot of you on the East Coast we've been praying for with the snow bomb going on, those in the North as well, Midwest. And uh, man, just, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff's been happening for 2018. But man, it is so neat to see and hear what God is doing. Uh, hit us up. Just send us a comment. Let us know right now, if you would, two things. Number one, if you're new to watching these broadcasts, just type in your name and the city or country of where you're from. My name is Brandon Dempsey, and I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm the CEO of Worship Team Training and Worship Team Training University. You can catch shows like this that we do every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central. And they're for pastors, worship leaders, singers, musicians, audio tech. And uh, so today we're talking about preparing for spontaneity and worship. Got some great friends joining us right now on Periscope. Tamika, what's up? Michelle, what's up? Our very own members at Worship Team Training University. Man, I'm so pumped to be here with you guys. Uh, we have a lot happening here at Worship Team Training and Worship Team Training University. Uh, for those of you who know already on the university site, we got a brand new redesign site ready to go with downloads, with music tips, with webinars. Uh, I'm going to get to that because pretty soon, later this month in January, next week and the week after or so, we have, we're calling this Tech Month. So if you are a worship leader that needs to understand more about tech and audio, anything from planning center to um, sound even, then you want to be sure to join us for coming up. Kent Morrison, also Chris Denning. That is going to be so awesome. Tamika, thanks for that uh, shout out. I love, I appreciate that. Uh, so it's going to be great to have these guys to teach us through technology. Uh, today we're talking about spontaneity. So we're kind of going a little different of a bend. And uh, also, I just want to let you guys know so coming up for shows like you, for, for you, like this. We're doing our brown bag every month. We don't have one this month because we're putting the tech webinar first. A lot of guys have been asking about that, so we're delivering. Uh, next month and so forth, we're going to be doing a brown bag special once a month, and it will be music-related. We'll have a guest on, or it may just be me, and talking things about like spontaneity and, and worship. So what I wanted to do is begin our time. Uh, I, I had some things I want to talk about, but God laid on my heart this morning of what to share with you today regarding spontaneity and worship. So let me just ask you the question. What does that mean to you? Uh, a great friend's coming in. Thanks so much. Surrender and all of our uh, Periscope buddies. Facebook Live. Again, guys, uh, share it out, everything out. Let us, let everybody, your friends know what's going on. Thanks for that. So as a worship leader, I know that we came out of Christmas and uh, it's kind of like we came out of the the doldrums of the after blues kind of thing. I know my family and I, we got sick. You probably did too. Uh, probably want to either shed a few new pounds off or uh, try a new habit or, you know, up your scale in organization or practice your gift and uh, with music or your voice or your musicianship, whatever it may be. And I was sharing this with our members yesterday in our Worship Monday Morning Bible Study that we have on the university site. I was sharing with them this very simple truth that God's not called you to do everything. Uh, we talk about resolutions, and they're all great, uh, but let me just ask you, do you keep your resolutions? Do you, I guess the better question is, do you make them? I find myself not doing that, and if you join our university, 
then you can see the Bible study that I put out yesterday. And we walk through this every week, every Monday at 8 a.m. live or playback. And I walk through the book that I had written called The Journey of a Worshipper. So you can catch that and catch me and your questions going live or by playback, also by podcast as well, when you join WTTU.co. Again, that's WTTU.co. Uh, a shout out to Worship Leaders Plus on uh, Facebook group. Thank you guys so much for uh, showing the love this past weekend. A lot of you have been reading my new devotionals that came out. We have one come out uh, that came out. It's called Speak to My Heart Jesus. Uh, it's not relatively new on Bible.com, but it is new on our site. So be sure to check that out. Again, it's called Speak to My Heart Jesus, and you can find it at wttu.co slash shop. I'm giving a lot of uh, 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 info to you guys, but if you're watching by Facebook, then you can catch the links at the bottom of these show notes and the, um, the header section. And on Periscope, just uh, watch out, go back to our Twitter feed, and you can find the links there as well. I'm really excited about a lot of things with 2018. Before I jump into preparing for spontaneity and worship, um, God's really taken my heart into a new journey. And I'm writing more, by the way, so a lot of you have been asking on Bible.com, and thanks so much for that. Uh, when are you putting out more devotionals? And uh, so the shout out again to uh, Worship Leaders Facebook group. We are writing right now. In fact, I'm on a, a book that I started way back a few years ago. And I was challenged recently, and I, I don't want to spill the beans on it, but I will tell you it's my personal story. It's, a, it's my memoir and experience of what it's been like growing out of the fractures of life of where I came from by means of my upbringing and my family, all the way up to a weird thing called leading worship. <laughs> what does that all mean? And going through the weaknesses, the challenges, the struggles that we face weekly, but how are they intertwined with our connection to God? That is the premise of the book. So I can't wait because uh, I talked with uh, my team over the past two weeks about it and um, my, um, uh, my head dude yesterday, and it's like, yeah, um, there's, there's a lot, and, and we're just really excited. So I can't wait to share it more with you. Let's move on. Uh, spontaneity and worship. Can you tell me what does that mean to you? Can you guys go ahead and... You know, as you let us know your name and where you're from, also just give us, oh, thanks so much for that, Lavana on Facebook Live. You got it. We have awesome uh, tech webinars coming for you. If you guys would, when you type in your name and, and city where you're from, uh, also would you please let us know kind of like what does, what does spontaneity mean to you, okay? Because that's been a revolving question for quite, I mean, a, forever in leading worship. The, the question comes down to, well, how much is too much? What's biblical? What's not biblical? Uh, what do you do in these times in between the songs? Um, the awkwardness, right? So we want to turn awkwardness into opportunity. We want to turn the missing link and the gaps into something that's more purposeful. But is it really about us doing it or is it about the Holy Spirit? And when it comes down to spontaneity, how much of that really is, I guess, is it really us trying to make it happen or is it really about us allowing God to make it happen? So I want to hear your thoughts because this is across the board spectrum. Everybody has a different view. Everybody has a different comment. So I'm open to that. But please let us know. Uh, we got Marty Loosh right here. Thanks so much on Facebook Live. It says, absolutely, letting the Holy Spirit lead as he decides and then be open to it. I'm in. I love that. Marty, thanks, man. And uh, also, uh, Miss Miles tagging in her friends there. Thanks so much. And Lavana, um, what does spontaneity mean to you? Now, if you've been following us on Snapchat, and also the Snapchat address, by the way, is Worship TT, and the same thing with our uh, Instagram is Worship Team Training. And I put up there a couple of videos just saying, you know, is, it, is spontaneity something that we plan for, or is spontaneity something that we prepare for? Ah, there's a difference. Now, I remember a good mentor came to me and said, Hey, Brandon, spontaneity in worship is great. You know, leading between the songs, um, even within the song, at the end of the song, whatever it may be, and as you feel led by God. But I had a lot of worship leaders ask me, But yeah, but Brandon, how do you know if it's God? <laughs> how do you know it's not last night's dinner? Or how do you know it's not uh, somebody messed up in the keyboard section or something. Yeah, keyboard section, right? Like you're a marching band keyboard and that, never mind. 
Um, but how does that all work? How do you know you're truly being led by God? Let me just give you um, a little bit of an illustration on two sides. Uh, one, a, um, a, a what I, uh, one of our workshops that, that we've done in New Jersey and New York just recently, a lot of things that I teach within my workshops of weekend workshops, and you can find those at worshipteentraining.com, I teach all about being biblically grounded while allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. Being biblically grounded and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. I said this before too that there's no, um, in echoing Proverbs, that there's no plan, there's nothing that can stand against God. And I believe that that is so prominent when we lead worship and we trust God into His leading that we trust His leading, not ours. And when we stay in the Word and we stay guided and geared by Him, then we are able to recognize and discern biblically what is God and what is not. In other words, if I know that I'm just going through a song and I really just want to do the chorus again because I like the sound of it, or I just love the sound of what the drums are doing and I want to do it again. I mean, I have to ask myself the question, that may be cool, it may be great, but is the, congreg is the congregation... Are they the church? Are they really connecting with that, you know, um, or is it are they connecting with something more? Uh, for instance, one of my recent trips to uh, to Bayonne, New Jersey. Shout out to First Assembly of God over at Bayonne. Love you guys, um, Pastor Donna and Pastor Mike. I love you guys so much. And uh, we spent time with the team. And I remember we were going through the set going through the, and I don't mean to say it that way, but going through the time of worship. And I remember there was a song that I was thinking about, I really wanted to do, it was on my heart. I was, I was praying about it the afternoon, but when it came down to the time of worship, doesn't that, isn't that interesting when it comes down to worship and the things that, like what Paul says, you want to do, but you can't do, you know, you don't want to do kind of thing. Uh, I'm using it in a different uh, paraphrasing, so sorry, analogy. Um, but I remember I wanted to do this song and then suddenly I forgot what the song was, but really did I forget what it was or I believe that God grabbed my heart into something else because when we were singing the words, we were singing just Good, Good Father. Now, I know for a lot of you worship leaders right now, you're, you're, you know, it's been kind of an old hat song, I know that, but for a lot of people, that song still, ha and it does, it has so much meaning, um, so don't get me wrong on that. I love uh, I spoke real quick with the writers of the song way back about a year ago when we started doing their stuff here at Worship Team Training and teaching on their stuff. And I just let them know, hey, I really love and dig the way you guys are, your hearts, um, the writing of it, the, the sincerity behind it. And that's something that I felt that the people were really locking onto. So when at that time of leading worship, it was just me and a guitar. There was no band. Uh, and there was nothing else. Uh, no stage lights. I mean, we just turned off the house lights, and that was it. Um, and I remember just going through the words, and at the very end of the song, we just started singing, you know, instead of, um, You're good, good father, we went into the faithful. And I just threw out these words that even though I wanted to go to a different song, but, you know, I just kept hearing the, mm, the faithful, mm, the faithful. And that it just, you know, just singing those words over and over again, because I knew the stories of the people that were there. And the people that were there worshiping that night, they were struggling within their faith. They were struggling within um, their days and nights of seeking God and His faithfulness. Is God going to come through with A, B, and C? Is, is God going to answer my cry? Is God going to help me out of depression? Is God going to pull me out of the darkness? So we just kept singing the word faithful, faithful. And making it a prayer. And what was so great about it was that I totally dismissed everything that I thought, right, that I thought I was going to lead with. And God just took over. How do you get to that point? And worship leaders have asked me that question. You know, how, how, do, you, how do you know when God is really pulling out you? Or how do you know uh, to be in that right moment? And I'll just share this simply with you. I think it's just simple preparation, it's not anything that's locked up in the, um, you know, I've got to make this happen kind of thing. Because once we start doing that, 
then we're making it more about ourselves and less about God. And so I found myself this morning, I'm just going to read this to you. I found myself this morning going over Proverbs 9. Now you may think, okay, well, Brandon, what does Proverbs 9 have anything to do with spontaneity and leading worship? Well, because again, good spontaneity, I, I believe, is planned in preparation. Because when you prepare your heart for God and you're allowing God to use you and speak through you, then you're able to be spontaneous in the music and in the way that you lead worship, spontaneous in your prayers, spontaneous in a spoken word, spontaneous in a core progression, as long as, right, that it fits in what you're doing and that you're doing what you're doing is edifying the church and what you're doing is also leading your band along in one cohesive unit, which I always often talk about in our workshops, and not leading your band by just kind of hoping that they get it and they just kind of follow along and then it's a train wreck, okay? And that's usually what happens between songs, right? Let's be real. So we want to stay away from that. We want to include. And, you know, some things that I say to my own worship team is, hey, guys, communion, if it goes a little longer, then we're going to repeat this one chorus again, uh, just follow my lead. Or if we get up to the second song and people are really into it, or maybe they're just, you know, they're done with it, watch me and we'll end it. But I'm always encouraging the worship team to watch where I'm going. Um, and, and they know that the Holy Spirit is leading all of us, not just me, but the whole team. And we do what he says. So, you know, um, okay, so Jossa, yeah, thanks so much for that. Brings up a great point on Facebook Live, sorry. Uh, you come up with public worship that you spent time with God in private, absolutely. And that's what I mean by preparation. And, and that's why I wanted to read this to you, um, Proverbs 9, because I found my heart settling on this this morning. And there's a kind of preparation that's involved. And so Proverbs 9 speaks about wisdom. It speaks about wisdom versus folly. Okay, I just want you to hear these words, and, and I'd like for you to think for a moment. This chapter, if, it will knock you out if you read it. It's chapter 9 of Proverbs, and it talks about two different forms of wisdom. Uh, one's really not wisdom. It's called folly. The other one is wisdom, which is from God. And the chapter 9 here is an allegory to, he says, the woman of wisdom and the woman of folly. Now, that's, it's, uh, it's an allegory there making an example, but we have one woman, let's say, in the story that has built her house. She's um, prepared her table. She's, she set out her maids to call for those to come in and say, come eat my food. That's what it says if you read here at Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 1 through 7 and um, in 9. And it talks about how, you know, leave, she says, leave your simple ways, walk in the way of understanding. Also goes on to say that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through me, your days will be many. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this in because Obviously, this woman has prepared her table. She's prepared a feast. She's prepared a worship service for God, simply. And as she's doing that, she is bringing out her best. She's working to the full to make sure that she's got the best people to help in line, the best foods, the best table, everything that she can do in her preparation for the people who are coming versus where it goes on to talk about, in uh, verse 13, the woman of folly, she's quite opposite. She's loud. She's undisciplined, without knowledge. She sits at the door of her house. Now, I love how it says that because she's not, it doesn't say she's actively busy. She's sitting at the door of her house. She's just being lazy, really. And then calling out to those who pass by, come in here. So there's like no effort. And then at the very end of 18, it says, But little do they know that the dead are there and her guests are in the depths of the grave. Now, okay, so Brandon, please unpack that. What does that have anything to do with preparation and spontaneity in worship? It means this, that we want to be like the wise woman. We want to spend our time preparing, preparing for God and what he's going to do and giving him our best and working with our best people. Not just passerby kind of thing and willy-nilly and, oh, we'll just kind of 
we don't have to give her best. We're just going to sit here and just let people come on in. And when they, they come in, then we'll just wing it. Is that really giving your best to God? And can God really move through you in a structured way where it, you can be spontaneous? I mean, sure, it can happen. Absolutely. But I don't think, I know for me, just my opinion, I wouldn't be in tune with God if I had not prepared. Um, even for this broadcast, if I had not prepared for it, and I'm just like, well, what do you guys want to talk about today? Well, how is church on Sunday? That may be fine too, but what meaning would it bring you? What edification would it bring you? Um, what would it do to your soul? Would it minister to you? So the woman clearly, in uh, chapter 9, verse 1, wisdom is what has built the house. Wisdom is what fashioned everything together to bring our best before God. And when we do that every time, then we are opening ourselves for God to use us because we're doing His work. We're giving Him our best. We're not just, it's not just the leftovers. It's not just what, what worked maybe last week or last month, but it's about being active right here in the moment. Uh, Steve Horton, what's up, man, says this on Facebook Live. Absolutely. Holly, he's high-fiving her. Holly Harris one of our awesome churches that we've worked with in our workshops. Thank you. She says, it is important to engage outside of worship to know what their needs are in worship. Love that. Love that. So what about you? Um, what was said here today, what sparked off to you? I mean, it, do you think this is important? Is it something that maybe you haven't really looked into much? Or um, am I just way off base? I mean, I'm open to your comments here, so let them fly. Let me know. Um, so as you guys roll in with the comments, I'll just kind of uh, talk a little bit more about the recap of that event uh, that we had on a Friday night with our uh, worship team in Bayonne. And this is what I asked them um, at the very, very end of the worship service. I had asked them, you know, ultimately when it comes to God, how are you really preparing for Him in worship? I mean, when you think about worship itself, is worship something that you feel like you have to start? Or rather, have you considered that worship may be already ongoing and we just join in to the festive song, that we become enraptured with the Holy Spirit and the body, the, the people of God? Um, when I lead worship, that's the number one thing that I'm, I'm most interested in is the people. What, what is the connection like in the room? And what have I done on a spiritual level to prepare for them to make this a moment where, no, it's not making worship about people. Don't get me wrong. It's more of a, a servant role. Uh, if you, I mean, Paul Veloz, dear friend, and you guys have heard this too, if you have just many times, he said that we're like waiters. We wait on people. We serve them at their table. I love that picture that Paul put together because we are, we're dressed like waiters and waitress. And we go around and we serve people. We, we love um, the people that are coming because you have to understand the people that are coming to your church, they're coming because they have needs. They're not coming because you do great music or great preaching or great children's ministry. They come because they have needs and they want to meet with God, how do they do that? They need your help. So worship leaders and worship teams, whatever that you think that maybe I'm of no use, or you may think, yeah, but I don't have it all together, or maybe I'm all washed up, or I'm not the right age, or whatever, consider this. Maybe, maybe this is exactly where God wants you to be. Because when you're vulnerable and you're aware of your frailties, God can use you in the most impactful way more than what you can ever think or know. And the other great thing about it is that you never know who else you may be impacting through other people because the one who's at work, God himself, is making his ministry happen through you and through your people. That, my friends, is great spontaneity, planning, preparing, and praying and worship. So guys, hey, join us this coming uh, week, coming up. Tech Week, Tech Week is here. Uh, tech Month, rather. Tech Month is coming, and that starts next week and the week after. I'm going to give you guys uh, links on this. If you're reading by uh, Facebook Live, just scroll to the bottom of the show notes, and uh, you'll also find, and you guys on Periscope as well, just go to wttu.co, 
go to the events page. All right. Lewis, thanks for the shout out, brother. I appreciate that. Lewis Rivera on Facebook Live. And thank you, Holly, again. Uh, check out the new devotional that's now in an ebook called Speak to My Heart Jesus. Uh, this, uh, thank you, Steve. Appreciate that too. Um, this book, Speak to My Heart Jesus, I wrote this some time ago, uh, about a year ago or so. And I love it because how I got to that title is what I do every day when I have my time with God. I just, I just sit before him, you know, with the word. I just sit with the word right here and I'm like, God, just speak to my heart. Direct me in your ways. Let them not be my ways, but your ways. And, and so that's where the book came from. And you can get that um, at wttu.co slash speak. And if I think we still have the 25% off uh, code that you can get as well. That's on the site. Uh, when you go, be sure to look at next, this coming Thursday, Zach Hicks uh, from Highlands Worship is coming. He's going to join us on the 11th, this coming Thursday at 11 a.m. You have to be a member. It says 11Q, but that's not right. It's 11 a.m., sorry. 11 a.m., uh, Zach is going to be talking about this very topic, you know, and what he does to spiritually prepare and to plan for spontaneity and what does that mean in worship. So I can't wait to hear him. Uh, again, Kent Morris, Chris Jennings, uh, Chris Jennings coming up later this month. And you can catch everything back on our podcast, wttu.co, become a member, and worshipteentraining.com. So I just want to say this to you before we close. Please remember this more than anything. Guys, you don't need to be perfect. You just need to let God transform the way you live and the way that you lead worship. Love you, and see you this coming Thursday if you're joining us, and also next Tuesday again at 11 a.m. Thanks so much. Love you guys. Bye.